Welcome back to another episode, and uh, we've got another special guest here, um, filling Hello. in for for Young Gopi. Um, he's I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna let him introduce himself, but oh, really? you are affectionately known to me as Tar Bear. Yeah, and you're the only one that calls me that. Am I the only, why? Yeah, no one else calls me Tar Bear. Really? Yeah, I mean, I remember that was a joke, but at, at school, but yeah, he, I think you're the only one that's. I mean, you don't actually call me Tar Bear, like. Right I don't call you Tar Bear, but he's saved on my phone as Tar Bear. That's his pet name. It, am um, I actually? You're saved as Tar Bear. Oh wow! You've always been saved as Tar Bear, and oh, wow. it's weird because his name's not Tar Bear. His name's Tarmid, but um, mm, we used to call him name. a bear because he's a he's a big boy. He's a big, cuddly, friendly boy. Bears aren't really Apparently. friendly though. But you hug a bear, right? Not. You hug a bear. Mm, I don't know if I'd hug a bear. <laughs> but like you, you hug a teddy bear, right? So this is why we call him Tar Bear. Maybe, maybe like a baby bear. Baby bear. A maybe cub. like a baby bear, yeah. A bear cub, yeah. But he's a he's a friendly bear. That's why we call him mm. Tar Bear. I mean, you, I actually got on my Leavers hoodie Tar Bear on the back. Do you remember? I was cool. Know. Yeah, I got Tar Bear. No one actually called me that apart from you. And for some reason that So you did up. it just for me? Yeah, I mean, I've never really had nicknames like growing up. Like, my name is just a strange name when you think about it. It is, it like, is. Tarmid. 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 It's spelt strange. Mm. White people have said it strangely. What have they said? Like, to me, t- Tarmid. Like, when to- you think about Tarmid is a very anglicized way of saying it. Yeah. Like, Obviously, we had a math teacher. Oh yeah, <laughs> he used to have a math teacher. He used to he used to call me Damid. So <laughs> she's a fully Asian. That's why. Yeah, and then my parents call me like Damid, which actually is not even the Arabic pronunciation of my so name. What's it's, the what's the what's the correct way to say your name then? I think like Arab Arabically is that word? I don't know. Arabically. Arabically, yeah. it's Tahmid. Yeah, it's Sounds actually Tahmid. But it's a mouthful. Like it's right. hard for white people to say. So I just tell people now, like my name is an arrangement of letters, yeah. and it's up to you to interpret it in whatever way you and want. And you won't get offended at how. No, say I think it. like for a long time I was wasting a lot of time being offended by my name. You, but... you, so you're actually offended with people. No, no, say not name, offended, right? but just like it's long to um, to continuously like correct people or be like mm, they'll be yeah. like, oh, how do you actually say it? And I'm like, oh, it's actually this, but I know you're not going to be able to say it. So. Yeah. Now it's just like, yeah, here's my name. You, you say it, whatever you, right. whatever way you How want. do you say your own name then? Yeah, I've got a very complicated relationship with my own name. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I have a very complicated relationship. I mean, it depends who I'm talking to. If it's like Bengali aunties, I'm like, yeah, my name is Damid. <laughs> and then if I'm introducing myself to like people our age, I'm like, Tamid. Tamid. Yeah, like it's just long to explain things. So. What would you introduce your name <clears throat> as to yourself? I don't know. Yeah. Again, I'd be like, look, your name is an arrangement of letters. You just want, you just do whatever you want with it. I think, mm. what do I say? Sometimes you have an inner voice, right? You have an mm. internal dialogue and you start talking to so yourself. So what does that inner voice say? I think it says Damid. And I think the reason why is... <laughs> I'll be like, Damid, you need to do this. Damid, do that. <laughs> it's, you guys listening are going to be like, what, like, what are these arrangement of syllables? Um, but I think it's mostly because that's what I've heard my family saying to me right, growing up. Right, growing mom, up and you're just yeah, used to it. My mum, my dad, my sister, they all call me Damid. So Damid. it's just, it's strange. And mm. then it's strange hearing my sister say my name to other people and you will hear her say like, oh, Tamid or Tamid. Mm. It's the same with my sister's name is Nabila, right? Right. But I say Nabila. And they're two very different ways of saying the yeah. same name. So. Fine. I've got, um, I've got a bit of a, I guess, an origin story for my name. Mm-hmm. It's a bit of a weird origin story. My name's not Yoni. As some of you, as, as most of you will probably know. Mm. Um, I don't know if you know this, actually. Obviously, he, yeah, you, do. know, you, know, you know my government name, but do you know the story around my government name? I don't know the story around it. Okay, so firstly, <clears throat> my parents, when they came to this country, they got my name wrong. They spelt it wrong on the register. Did they? Yeah. So my government <laughs> name is spelled um, Yonhak, unlike my certificates. It's spelled Y-O-N-H-A-K. That's not actually my name. <laughs> my name's Yunhak. Like, it is, isn't it? Yeah. It's like Yunhak, but they spell it wrong. They only wrote one O in there when it should be like two O's or a U. Oh. So growing up, I, I had this identity crisis where I'm just like, they're calling me Yunhak, but my name's spelled Yonhak. Mm. So years later, I went back to him and I was like, why, why have you spelled it as Yonhak? 
And I thought maybe it was a difference in like the language. Maybe you know how like when certain things are pronounced in in like a, another country, but like mm. it's kind of it's different here. They were just like we spelt your name wrong. We just yeah, we just didn't wow. know the language, didn't know the alphabet, and we just spelt your name wrong. So that's the first story. Whoops. <laughs> and um, <laughs> and again, yeah, I think again, it's, it's not even just white people's kids back in the day couldn't say Yon Hack. Mm. It's the most easiest name ever. It's just literally Y O N H A K. No one could say it. Mm, so it's actually went, pronounced Yun, Yun, Yun Hack. Yeah, Yun, yeah. Because you were saved on my phone for a really long time as Yun Hack. Mm. And like, that's obviously correct, but mm. I didn't know that that was uh, the story behind Yon yeah. Hack versus Yun Hack. And then, and then people couldn't call me Yon Hack. So I, t- I told them to call me Yoni, but then they don't even call me Yoni anymore. They used to call me Johnny. Your names had so many so different, many different, uh, so many different identities. Uh, You're currently it's... saved on my phone as Yoni Winterbottom. <laughs> Do you know where that comes from? You know where that comes yeah, from. In yeah, tribute yeah. to uh, Annalise. Annalise Keating, one of our favorite, favorite uh, uh, fictional characters of all time. <laughs> This is the Grass Tooth Podcast. Oh shit, why do I keep can doing you, that? Can you stop abusing <laughs> can you stop abusing my mic? I'm really sorry about that. Like, like you're <clears throat> It just happens. I'm so excited to be here and I'm so honored. I will go into something which I know you're very passionate about. It was kind of the start of our bond, wasn't it? The um a sort of love and interest mm. in, in music. Yeah, um, definitely. Yeah, no, music has been a huge constant in my life yeah. since I was like a young child. And it's a huge part of me. I feel like it saved my life multiple times, honestly. It saved my life. And I I, I feel very humbled when people say that, like, mm-hmm. oh, yeah, like I think of you when I think of music. But that's what I love about music is how much there is still for me to explore mm-hmm. and um, to try out basically because I'd never like limiting myself to like one genre or this or that. I guess thinking of contemporary music and stuff like anything that's kind of going on that you've that you're interested in you've, you know, any of your favorite artists anything going on or I mean so many things like all the yeah. time but uh <laughs> constantly like a multiverse of just <laughs> musical things just constantly swirling whilst also trying to juggle the the things going on in life but mm. um yeah you know that Beyonce is my my number Beyonce. one Beyonce Beyonce is my number one artist like, She's your bae She's my bae yeah Yeah You know how people like shorten her name to like mm. B E Y Mm. I'm really con- as we were talking about names earlier. I get really conflicted with that. Like, do I call that Bay in my head, or do I call her B? Because oh. she's Beyonce, isn't she? She's not Beyonce. Oh, I didn't think about it. Yeah, that way. it's a big conflict I have within me. What do <laughs> I? That's a big call? conflict. It's a you huge have. conflict. Yeah, and people talk about it as well on Reddit. They're like, "Shit, mm. what does what does B E Y actually mean?" So what do you think then? I think it actually, it, it should be B because people refer to her in songs like when Jay-Z mm. refers like, you ready B? But, actually- it, but are they calling her B because of, um, in terms of the, the short pronunciation of B-E-Y or is it because of the letter B? I don't know. And I, is it like they've just taken the letter B yeah. from her name and they're just... Also the letter B, like the, the letter B is a very good sort of um, term of endearment for, it is, yeah. for, for your, for your hey, significant B. other. Mm. So it could just be that as well. Be a lot of things. But... It's bad because a lot of the time in my head, I do, when I see it, I, mm. say, I, I think Bay, And I'm mm. like, that's actually not right. You shouldn't be saying that. Why, <laughs> should, why shouldn't you be saying that? Because her name is Beyonce. It's not Beyonce, is it? It's not, but if it's shortened, you can, mm. you can kind of, it's, it's, it's a different word, isn't it? It's a different name. It's a different name, yeah. This is one of, these are some <laughs> of the key questions we get down to. <laughs> <laughs> On the grass, dude. Is it B up. or Bay? Are you team you, B or are you team B? You tell us in the comments. But <laughs> well, what's been happening with uh, B? Um, she released a album recently. Oh, wow. She released an album, as, as artists do. Mm-hmm. But um, <laughs> this artist, um, sorry, not this artist, this album is meant to be along the themes of country. Country, okay. Yeah, so she released a statement before it was released, um, mm. like a week before, and she said, this is not a country album. Right. This is a Beyonce album. Yeah. But if it's country music. The thing is, though, if you listen to it all the way through, it's 27 songs long, which. 27 for an album. Yeah. They're not all three minutes. Some of them are okay, like less right, than a minute. Right, Some right. of them are interlude. So it's. Okay. it's, 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 it's yeah. Balances but, out. 
it balances out, but it's still like eighty nine. It's eighty nine minutes, which is longer than most yeah, albums yeah. are released um, mm-hmm. these days. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of genres that she explores, which is what I was referring to. Like, there's no point limiting yourself to one mm. thing. There are obviously like huge country influences, like like some songs like where it's got nice like acoustic guitar, like right, what right, you right. imagine yeah, like, yeah, yeah. from back in the day. But there's a lot of um, yeah, like mix. She's always done like R and B, hip hop, dance. Mm. You know what I mean? I've always thought of her as a dance artist. Personally, yeah, I, I feel like I mean. she does dance music better than like most people do. To be honest, a lot of her songs are dance bangers. They're very, yeah, they're, they're very they're dance, dance bangers, bangers. Yeah. So there's a lot of that. There's a lot of hip hop. There's a lot of R and B. So she's just melding things together, and it's that's what so it's not so so oh, yeah. So it's a mix of different. Uh, oh, sorry, it's a mix of different um, <clears throat> like genres basically. But there's a lot of country music in there, or. There is, and they've like mixed in country into like right, other like right, trap okay, okay. or something. Like mm. they'll have like a, a fiddle oh. playing with like trap music. Oh, yeah, okay. it's very interesting. Right. But the album is interesting because she's releasing this trilogy of albums. Right. This is a second one. Okay. And I th- the theme is because the first one was a dance album, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and the theme I thought was going to be just a trilogy of like dance bangers. Right, and I was okay, ready for that yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? I was like, yeah, you're a dance artist. Do that shit. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I'm swearing, but um... <laughs> I, I know how much I know how much Beyonce gets you yeah, into so, a into a frenzy. Yeah, exactly. So in February, when she announced like a country theme, I was like, mm-hmm. "Oh shit, the rumors are actually true. She's right. actually going down this path." But she's done it very well, and it's mm-hmm. all about. I think this trilogy of music is all about um, reclaiming old genre, not old, but genres of music that historically linked to. Um, black culture oh, okay. so music that um, black people have created basically right. with the first album it was kind of like house music mm-hmm, ballroom mm-hmm, music that mm-hmm. was really big in like the 80s and 90s country as well I didn't know much about that I didn't know that I didn't people. even know country comes from a, a black origin like, is I that, didn't either I thought it was just rednecks is that right it was like white people oh, I think just, it was just white people from the south the yeah. <laughs> with banjos and stuff yeah <laughs> and fiddles like sitting in the exactly. grass right that's what yeah, you imagine yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, with a, like a cowboy hat and everything, but apparently it's 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 yeah it's got it? some roots in black culture, and it makes me very excited for the next one because apparent the room is that it's rock music. Yeah. Oh, yeah, she's gonna do a rock album hopefully. Beyonce with rock could be a it could be a, a lethal combination. To that voice, that powerful, growly, sort of, um, soul-y voice. Yeah, when she like you know when they just scream like when they scream, hardcore metal right? rock. I mm. could I could definitely see. the thing with Beyonce right is that like she's so talented as a as like in terms of her voice but just mm. musically she's so talented i feel like she can pull off most genres mm. um, and you've, you like even during her career i think you've seen her development like she started off i mean okay destiny's child and whatever like but she's always had that kind of grounding in pop mm. but like you've seen her sing ballads yeah Do you know what i mean you've seen her dance like she yeah, just dance. does a bit of everything so yeah. country rock mm. I, I can see her slaying him i remember a few years ago when we there was like a song called ape shit out Okay. <laughs> Do you remember? It was like with Jay Z, and it's really like, it was kind of like Migo style music. Oh, okay, okay. And I remember you were like, yeah, this is like Thought Yonce. But... Thought, thought... <laughs> Did I say that? I think so. You were like, Yonce. yeah, this is Thought Yonce. But I, I, I still really rate like Listen from back in the day. So that's I, that's actually my favorite Beyonce song. Is it actually? Listen, yeah. It's a great song. Because I saw it. I, I saw us sing it live. Like I. I Did saw you? it live on on YouTube. Oh uh, yeah, and like it just it blew me away, man. She's she's mm. amazing in that. She's got a great voice. She's, she's got, got an incredible superb voice. voice. Yeah, and she's a good aura and energy. So. You were pointing at some. You were just like she's got a good. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't sure what you were. She's about. got a good aura. 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 Yeah. Ev- aura. Everything. Not just her. aura. Aura. Mm, an aura. Yeah. yeah she's got you, a great aura. That's what you mean. Um. <laughs> Cool. Um, so when's it, has, has it come out already? Or is yeah, it... it came out last Friday. So mm. not, not this Friday. But Have you Friday. gone through all of eighty nine minutes? All eighty nine minutes. Eighty nine minutes. Yeah, I've listened to it quite a few, quite a few times now. Oh, you've listened... listened to it quite a few times. Yeah, um, I. You know, I'm dedicated. You're to, a yeah. dedicated. You're a you're yeah. a bee. You're a part of the beehive. Aren't I'm a you? big part of the beehive. Yeah, very chaotic group. Is that what her fans are called? The beehive. Yeah, not the oh, bay hive, but the beehive. beehive, and it's spelled B E Y as well. So oh, more reason. So that adds that adds a bit more to the uh, the, the question. It does. Yeah. Okay. Fine. Um, cool. Yeah. I I didn't I didn't even realize that Beyonce came out with another album. Maybe I'm just not clued in, or I'm living under a rock or something. But 
I think just Check artists release so many so much music know, all the time. Do you know what I mean? I like this Friday, I had three albums by three completely different artists mm. that I like that came out, and I'm like, great. Now I need to balance this on top of mm. Cowboy Carter, the name of the album. Is that what it's called? Cowboy it's called Carter. Ca- yeah, Cowboy. She's wearing a cowboy hat. She is wearing a cowboy hat. On fair the, enough. Um, fair enough. Have you okay. ever thought about being the cowboy? I think I'd make a very good cowboy. What does that mean to you, like being the cowboy? Mm, it means you're fun. It means you're fun. So I, I, I don't know if I've, have we asked you this question? Because um, it's really funny, right? Mm-hmm. Um, we asked my friendship group, and I think you were included in that. I don't know if you were, because we asked people separately, but then wow. we also asked my girlfriend. I think, my, no, my girlfriend came up with this question. Um, are you, she was like, are you, oh, are you a, are you a cowboy? Are you a ninja? And what was the other one? Oh, I'm trying to think. Do you not remember anything like this? I'm just going to say, I wasn't asked about this question. So no. clearly I'm not part of this friendship. <laughs> oh, now no, he's going to start getting petty. I'm joking, I'm joking. <laughs> um, it was like, are you a cowboy? Um, are you... Okay, let me try and are find it cowboy? online. It was, it's either, are you a cowboy? Are you um, a ninja or are you something? Cowboy... Sorry, guys. Cowboy, ninja or something else. I'm going to find it. Okay, so we're back and I've just found out the question. I completely forgot what it was. Okay. Right? But... Um, someone asked this question is Yoni a cowboy samurai or pirate right I want you to answer that question what am I what are you what am I yeah um, I think you are just think of what they are like in terms of as as people as a mm. lifestyle what am I I feel like you're a cowboy to be honest I feel like you're a cowboy he, he knows not, mm. it's not just him we've asked six or seven <laughs> of my friends and without any hesitation, they just said cowboy. He's a cowboy. He's nothing else but a cowboy, right? We asked my girlfriend that. She called me a samurai. Why did she call you a samurai? Because I think she's it? just being racist. Um. But like, she, yeah, I, I don't know why. Because like, a cow, what's, what's a cowboy? He's fun. Yeehaw! He's you know fun. Mean? He's also got some like mysteriousness. Mysteriousness. Mysteriousness to it. Am, am, yeah. I, am I quite mysterious to you? Not really, but... Yeah. <laughs> But like, yeah. there's a coolness about him. Come I think, on. and like, that's what we do, man. I think cowboys kind of like they're in control. They're like sort of like yeah. lone rangers from time mm-hmm. to time. They can mm-hmm. be in control. Mm-hmm. I think you're generally quite good at that. Like mm-hmm. you're good at being left to your own devices. Cool. That's it. That's it. The reasons for the other two not being you, Samuel, I feel like is just it's a it's a very disciplined. Like, I think so, yeah. I mean, I can be disciplined, but it's just not in my makeup to be mm. that disciplined. And like, it's a very sort of low. I mean, if it, would a samurai have a podcast? <laughs> like, it's just you're meant to be very sort of low key, so that that mm, doesn't work true, out either. Yeah, a might not have a um, and a pirate. I'm not. I'm not a naughty boy. Yeah, pirates are. I, was, I didn't. This might be very stereotypical based mm. on like just Disney films that yeah. I watched and shit of like them having a hook. Just <laughs> naughty people, aren't they? They're naughty and evil, and they just want to like loot you and stuff. Mm. So that's, I don't. That's not me. No, nah, you're you're not capable of like that much uh, mischievousness. I'm a good boy. Yeah, is it? So I'm a, I'm a cowboy. Um, <clears throat> there we go. Um, talking about you actually brought up something actually, which I want to bring back again okay, right? for it. something along the lines of um, something about like so many artists putting albums out or something mm. like that right there's been something going on there's been a bit of beef in the uh, in the in the rap world between between Kendrick mm. or K-Dot there has been. J. Cole and Drake yeah there has been a bit and like mm. obviously K-Dot's come out He's mm. parred out Drake and uh, and J Cole, and, um, yeah. and J Cole came back with a with a diss track. I haven't heard it properly, but one of the key lines in it was like, "How can you call yourself like the goat if you don't bring out m- many albums?" Mm. Like I think Kendrick's brought out four or five albums since he started, and like obviously most of those albums are, are absolute bangers. But Not does J Cole Cole's just like all of them? Uh, yeah, I mean I, I don't know about his, his his most recent one was good. I think it was okay. The Mr. Morale one. Yeah, I think that was okay. But um, his obviously his previous ones were just very, f- mm. just fire, right? But does J Cole have a point there? Uh, I I don't know. I think he does. I get. I do get J Cole's point. Like uh, I think the quote I remember reading it yesterday was something like, "How can you call yourself Big Three or something when you release an album every thirty months or something?" That's it. Like that's that, it. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah, I saw that. 
Uh, I don't know. This is the thing. I'm actually never been a huge J. Cole fan. So mm. my bias is a lot towards Kendrick just because I think he does release top tier music like every time mm. he he um, he drops. But I do see J. Cole's point. Like mm. you do need to kind of... Consistency? I guess so, mm. yeah. But then I think about someone who we've talked about a lot Taylor Swift who releases music actually quite often mm. and she's obviously considered like top of her game right but does just releasing a lot of music and it doing well does that necessarily translate to you are the goat true it's all about to me quality is more important than quality over quantity mm. but what if that quantity is just not enough do you know what I mean I don't know yeah. there are artists you can argue for like do you know Lauren Hill? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so she's only released one album ever and mm. she is still touring that album. And I don't know yeah. if you know about her, but she's got this like notorious reputation for coming out like really late at shows. <laughs> <laughs> like there are memes I've seen where someone's like, um, oh, like someone's talking to someone and they're like, oh, I don't think I'm going to that Lauren Hill show later. And someone's like, yeah, I don't think Lauren Hill is either. <laughs> oh, is that like a running joke? Yeah, it's like a running joke that she comes super late to her show. Right. And she even did like a speech at one like a few months ago. And she was uh, like, yeah, like I'm allowed to be late and stuff. Like it was like a whole I'm allowed ten... to be late? Yeah, she was like, you guys are lucky that I come out after but 20 is she, years. But is she being serious about that? Or is she just reveling in the sort of joke? Like the, the meme around it? Or, she being, or do you think she's being serious? I think she's serious to some extent because right, this is okay. a reputation she's had for many years. Right, I luckily okay. saw her in December 2018 and she oh. was actually in London. She was completely on time. She performed amazingly. And like, I have nothing to complain well about. Well done, Lauren Hill. Well done. Yeah. You, Great job. <laughs> did it for me. Um, but yeah, she, there is a lot of history around right. like her record label basically screwed her over. Oh, okay, they okay. took away like the publishing rights or the mastering rights or whatever. Mm. And she has to perform slightly different arrangements of the original oh, tracks. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So she still makes money and obviously she tours, but like her record label screwed her over. So she kind of has this sort of like chip on her shoulder about mm. like mm. how how much has been taken away from her and got how you, much she you. should be allowed to do. Got you. But she is still considered like one of the goats. Like I go back to she's that am- album. She's amazing. She's incredible. She's like, amazing. No, there's no doubt amazing, about it. She's amazing, honestly. Fair enough. So reputation and quality is, it's it's a whole. It's a huge thing. It's a huge thing, yeah. No, for sure. I think, um, I mean, for listen, Kendrick for me, it's just, he's just fire. He's just fire, He's yeah. just fire. Man. Like there's, mm. like, I'm just trying to think. There's a few songs which made me bang my head against the wall. In a good way? Oh, no, in a great way. In a great way, yeah. In a great exactly. way. And that's that's just because Kendrick's fire. So, yeah. No, it's... um, We'll see how this all develops, this uh, feud. This de- mm. uh, feud develops. I think Drake's come out with a few comments. Just nothing comments, really. Drake um, is just Drake, right? <laughs> <laughs> but I've seen some tweets of people talking about Kendrick. And they're yeah. like, oh, um, when was the last time that you were in a car or you were in a party and you were like, oh, yeah, put on that new Kendrick? It's true. It's true. Yeah, it's true. It's true. I mean, people go to Drake like... For, for that for party bangers Bro, like at every party Drake songs are playing so you can't mm. you can't look down on the man do you know what I mean his beats a lot of, a lot of his songs mm. like are just bangers like they are but when you're in a club and you hear Mad City true, or you hear true. like Backstreet Freestyle or Backstreet what is it called Backseat Backstreet Backs, uh, back, Backseat Freestyle <laughs> Backseat Freestyle Black of the Berry Black of the Berry. Oh my God, I haven't that, heard that I think that's so the one that long. made me bang my head against the wall. Oh, mate, I need to listen to that again. I want some Black Breeze right now. Oh. Yeah, that song. I'm, we're going to put this on after. And mm. yeah, well, we're going to feel it. <laughs> um, one last thing about music, though. I think um, we kind of went into it before um, off, off camera. Mm-hmm. Obviously, I mean, you're a huge Taylor Swift fan. I am, yeah. I, I'll be quiet. Yeah, I'll be quiet. Cities, yeah, I paid a lot of money. I'm gonna see. You're you're a huge Taylor Swift fan. I am. I am. Um, I think a lot of you know my uh, my thoughts on on Taylor Swift personally. But mm-hmm. you had something, and I want you to say it. You had something that you wanted. To, you had a, something that you were a bit annoyed about. Yeah, it was. Right? Yeah, it was and I want I want to hear this because this. <clears throat> yeah, I want to hear it. You want to hear a Swifty bitch <laughs> a little bit? Yeah. Um, I think this is a completely valid Taylor. If you ever see this, like twenty years down the line, please know that, like, I, I I appreciate you as a as a businesswoman, but, and I love your music, but, uh, 
But uh, <laughs> you already... said but a few times. <laughs> yeah, I did. Um, she's releasing a new album, basically. Oh, sorry, I keep doing that. She is releasing a new album later this month, and it's yeah. called The Tortured Poets Department, I Poets believe. Department, yeah. yeah. And I'm very excited to hear it. Mm. But in the lead up, in the last few weeks, she, um, like each week, released, announced on her on her Instagram or her website that she was releasing a new variant of her vinyl mm. for this album with an exclusive bonus track. And there were basically five different, I think it was five, I was quite outraged by this by this number when it was when I when I finally counted it it was five different variants with a different bonus track on each one mm-hmm. and really the incentive here is to try and make as many teenage white girls including myself teenage white girl over here <clears throat> yeah um <laughs> trying to get that rack trying that to dollar. get that dollar and fair enough yeah but we are also living in a cost of living crisis and we're in a worldwide recession and it's not really the teenage white girls that are buying it is it it's their families and their parents and it's 28 year old bengali <laughs> yeah okay i haven't ordered a single one i haven't ordered any of these oh of course yeah, yeah i, I actually course, haven't yeah, no yeah. i haven't especially because i was so like outraged by this and i also yeah. i was like which one do i even buy what's the point you- <laughs> i'm only gonna buy one i'm not gonna buy like 150 60 pounds mm. worth of vinyls mm. like i'm gonna wait till someone puts this shit on streaming yeah, yeah. i can just download it somewhere or mix it out. you know like people do this they they take bonus tracks of um oh yeah, of yeah. albums of and course, they actually upload them onto spotify as a podcast yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> might have we might have to start doing that on could be a thing <laughs> still the idea <laughs> Um, so yeah, like it's it's business savvy. Don't get me wrong; it's great. She's a businesswoman. She's she's at the top of her game. I, I'll, I'll give is, her that. Yeah, she is, and she's got more money now than most people will ever dream of. Too much money. Too much money from this Too tour, from the film, from re-releasing the film on like Amazon and 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 Disney and all the other variants of other vinyls of all the albums that she's re-released or whatever. So she don't she don't need it. She's gonna get that number one anyway, and I I get I get it. It's just boosting it even further. But mm. I think there's a line. There's a line. There's yeah. a line. And she's and crossed that line. Yeah, she kind of yeah, crossed it. She wasn't even swift with it. She was um. <laughs> she's quite callous. She's quite she was callous, Taylor callous yeah. with that. <laughs> but I have I have um another friend that you've met as well before, yeah. Arab, who's a huge. Taylor Swift fan as well. Right, right. Even he was quite annoyed. So really? I'm sure it's not just us. It's, it's, uh, it's I mean, talking about, because uh, I don't want to talk about it too much. Yeah. No, um, sure. I got forced to watching the, a bit of the, uh, the film. Did you? Yeah, I got forced, literally forced. How much by, did you By make... my girlfriend, like probably about 25 minutes of it. That's quite impressive, to be honest. She forced me to watch it. That's quite impressive. Um, what songs do you remember? Like, do you remember anything? I don't know any of the songs. But I remember she was in like, there's one of the, it was like a song about an office. Like she was in an office. There was like a big setup and she was like in is an it, office. Is it called The Man? It's The Man. The it's Man. The man. Yeah. yeah, The Man. It's The Man. The man um, yeah. yeah, just... Fuck that shit. <laughs> <laughs> and we're now... <laughs> Swiftly getting into the glass truth. The glass truth. Making sense of nonsense. Hello, and we are back with uh, the glass truth. Um, the glass truth is a segment in this podcast where we find something interesting that has happened in our in our world. Mm. Right, the juicy gossip. Juicy. Interesting things that have happened, and we bring them to light and we discuss them. And we get our personal opinions and thoughts mm-hmm. and have a laugh. And nice. this one is a bit more lighthearted. Or is it? We'll find out when we discuss further. Um, <laughs> the headline for this glass truth is A llama has enrolled in an undergraduate program at college. A llama. How does that make any sense? Uh, let me just read out <laughs> what has happened and uh, we'll see, we'll discuss it a bit further. So the College of Liberal Arts is proud to announce that we are the first college in the nation to admit a llama into an undergraduate program. Um, congratulations to Caesar, the llama. Cute name. Who will also be pursuing a minor in Spanish <laughs> and a micro-credential in petting zoo administration. 
So, what are your <laughs> what are your initial thoughts? My initial thoughts are: show me a video of that llama speaking, and I'll happily let this whole topic go. <laughs> show me it saying like "hello" in Spanish or whatever, right. and I'll happily just accept this whole thing. But until then, the fuck. Like, what is the world coming to? Mm. Like, listen, I'm all for a bit of banter and a bit of fun, but enrolling a, an animal into college? Mm, it's a bit of a slippery slope, isn't that's it? That's just like, what, how do you, how do you, how does that ever come, how does that ever come, like, I just don't understand that. Mm. Uh, do you know what I mean? Like, I get training a guide dog. Yeah, like, yeah. Like, that's yeah. a thing, but this is learning a language. Yeah, like, what? Or are they are they trying to say that the llama can non-verbally communicate and it can understand the Spanish? But then you can give every dog a degree then for understanding English if you give it yeah, some commands. Yeah, right. Hmm. How, how does this make sense? I've got, I read this, right? And I had three things which kind of made me, not is angry the right word? Not angry, but very, very confused. And I want to get your thoughts on them, right? Mm. Three different scenarios. And you tell me how you feel about them. Okay. Imagine if you wanted to apply for a degree, <laughs> but then your space got taken <laughs> by a llama. How would you feel? <laughs> you wanted a micro degree, micro credential in petting zoo administration and a, uh, a minor in Spanish. How would you feel if you got told that Caesar the llama took your, took your place? I feel pretty shit about myself. Yeah. I'm not gonna lie. Like, right. am I not better than a llama? How can a llama take my place? Right. <laughs> right. We laugh about it, but actually, it would make me cry. There's someone out there that didn't get their place because a yeah. llama took it. How would your parents take it? They like they would. They're Asian parents, yeah. so they would be very upset. You know, Asian parents compare you to like other friends. They compare you to. Do you know Johnny Kim? He's the um, he's like this Korean American guy that's. He's a navy. He's a navy seal. He's a doctor and a lawyer. Wow, that's like that's the sort of people that my parents compared me to, and told me I'm failing because I'm not like them, right? This is not a fictional character. This is an actual. This is person. this, this is an actual person. Yeah. Wow. But then imagine if I told them that llama got in and I didn't. It's GGS. I'd have to just like hide my face from them from it's them just forever. I'm, a, I'm a disgrace mm. okay so that's that's the first <laughs> serious thing to have happened right the next one is <laughs> imagine <laughs> imagine if the llama caesar got higher grades than you can you imagine i can't i don't want to imagine <laughs> If they got higher grades a than higher you, grade. wow. Imagine the, the llama gets the first, you get a D1. Yeah. <laughs> or a 2-2 two -two or something. Oh. <laughs> I mean, I guess if... This is this is what I mean. There's no equity in this. Because they'll like if they do get a first, if, the, if, the, if Caesar does get a first, he probably has a different curriculum, like a slightly different curriculum. Probably, yeah. Because like, how, yeah. how do you do a speaking exam with a, with a llama? Just doesn't make sense. No, they must have. They must have yeah. done something, like given him special, like... Extra mm. time or something <laughs> in the exam for the verbal <laughs> for the speech test. <laughs> Ridiculous! Um, wow. And apparently he's he's getting it fully funded. Imagine if you lose out on funding because Caesar the Llama took your oh, took your portion of the funding. Damn, that would make me furious. You're me actually angry, angry, aren't you? Yeah. I, I can see. I can see. I can see you boiling inside. <laughs> Yeah, we had stuff like that going on at uni towards the end where they like had this bursary for like our electives that they kind of hid mm. and didn't tell us all about. Mm. So like loads of us missed out because they purposely didn't send out an email. So I resonate a lot with yeah. like, missing <laughs> out on, <laughs> on funding. And if it's a llama, then... That's stressful, isn't it? No. For me, the greatest fear is explaining this to anyone in your, in your circle, family, friends. How do you explain that sort of stuff? Mm. Like... I just, I'm, I'm speechless. I read this and I, I initially giggled. It's one of those, I think that comes out and you're meant to feel good about the llama. Like you're meant to be like, you know what? We're progressing. This is fun. This is like funny news. This is like cute. Mm. I think it's, I think it's funny to some extent. Mm, I think yeah. like, that's what I think of it. Like that's ridiculous. But I don't think like, this is a step forward for humanity or animals, like giving Can't them be. a degree. Like. Mm. The animal's never going to appreciate the degree. Isn't that the whole point 
of a degree in a way. Like mm. you have the awareness to know that this is a, a big special thing. Yeah. The llama is just going to be like, I'm still the same. It's just a llama. Yeah, exactly. Like it has no appreciation for mm. the fact that it's done a course. Right. Or got this result in the exam. So I, I'm not trying to say, listen, animals aren't stupid. Oh, definitely right. not. They're no, not, right? Animals. But they're not humans. And I know that sounds super obvious, right? But the reason I'm saying this is because... Um, <laughs> it sounds a bit elitist. I'm not going <laughs> to lie. <laughs> I was at uni, right? Yeah. And in one of our degrees, in one of our modules, um, we were talking about the intelligence of animals. And I was sitting in this seminar with six or seven animal activists, animal, like, people just love animals. Listen, I love animals. I've got pets and I love going to the zoos, all of that sort of stuff, right? And they were trying to argue that animals are as smart as um, humans, right? Okay. And I said to them, how dare you say that? You actually said that? I literally said, how dare do you, like, how dare you say that? Like, what is going on here? Oh. And they're like, oh no, have you not seen those videos of like dogs who like, who understand when a, when an owner counts to like nine or 10 and they do, they do a certain thing and they're like, oh look, it just proves to you that animals are so smart and stuff. I'm like, listen, I said this as well. This is what I said, right? I said, would you applaud um, a 12 year old kid for counting from one to 10? You wouldn't, right? A 12 year old kid, mm. right? If a dog could count from one to 10, would you applaud it? Yeah. Yeah, you would, right? But what, do you mean like speaking it out loud or do you mean- Speaking like... out loud, yeah. Yeah, but a dog can never do that. I know a dog can't do, that's my okay, point. Fine, yeah, I, that's my point, a dog can't do that. Okay, yeah. So they're not as smart as humans, is my point. I think like animals are definitely, they don't have the same- um, like The same cognitive cogn abilities yeah, as us. Yeah, cognitive yeah. Um, capabilities in terms of intellect as we do. Mm. Obviously we are very high beings. Mm. I don't know about you and I, but we are, <laughs> as a race, we <laughs> as a race of species, we are supposedly a very um, sentinel type of being, right? I think so. Apparently, yeah. yeah. But I think that a lot of other animals do have very high intellectual capabilities, but they're not in a certain way that are gonna help us. So like mm, if you, apparently fine, if you fine, take fine. a spider to space, it can, despite the fact that there's no gravity, it will know how to create a web. Oh, wow. Yeah. But I'm not gonna ask a spider to do my taxes for and me. And your accounting, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So right, yeah, okay. animals can be super clever. And maybe like within their own sort of species, they they communicate in their own way, right? Yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah, definitely. Um, what was that? We talked about it in one of the early episodes of this um, of this podcast. Mm. My octopus teacher. Your what? Your my, my my octopus teacher What's is like that? a documentary about an, uh. like a really smart octopus and how they've got they understand human like touch and because mm. this guy he's basically like interested in octopuses goes in gets into a relationship like okay not like a platonic relationship with an octopus mm. and it keeps coming back and it and it gets friendly and apparently it's a really emotional documentary i kind of need to watch it um, but are they like a thing no i don't <laughs> know oh, i think they're married now. <laughs> which tentacle does the ring go on <laughs> he had to get eight rings oh yeah you could because like the octopus wasn't happy with one. Oh, fine yeah okay. so um expensive octopuses mm, are expensive yeah, uh, they must be. and they're also delicious yeah, they can be. Yeah, they can be quite nice. But um, all right, fair enough. You know what? Yeah, uh, this is what I will admit. Animals have their own, <clears throat> have their own ability, have their own sort of ways of communicating. Mm -hmm. All right, it's not like humans. I get that. Mm -hmm. But you know what? That's the thing. Let them study their own degrees. Mm. They don't need to study a Spanish degree from a university, from a human university. Like exactly. it just doesn't need to happen, right? If they're so clever, let them create their own schools and their own universities. Like in exactly. Finding Nemo and shit. Exactly. If let they them, were that clever, they would have done that by now. Let them create their own AQA and edXL. Mm. Let them do that. Would you do a Would you do a doggy degree? I don't think I want to do any more degrees <laughs> in my life. I'm not gonna finish like, after the yeah. Finish with the education system. Finish with education. Yeah. Yeah. Makes sense. I think so. All right, Caesar. You know what, Caesar? I like you. Do you like Caesar? I think so. It's a really cute name. I respect like, I it. Like... I respect it. Caesar, listen, do your thing. All right. Mm -hmm. If you can speak Spanish, all right. Hola. Mm -hmm. All right. Mi, mi amigo. Fair enough. All right. Fair I want to see it. All right. But until then, this has been The Glass Truth. Mm hmm.
Tommy, have you ever had or worked for a terrible boss or manager? Yeah, multiple times. Definitely yeah. multiple times, especially when I was working as a doctor in mm. the NHS. You come across so many people who might not necessarily want to be shitty to you, but right. it's just in their nature. To just be as shitty. humans, they're yeah. just yeah, and they will literally just, just pulverize shit. you. They pulverize <laughs> they you. They pulverize you to the point where you want to cry. And you can't cry because you need to just go around from patient to patient and just put on a brave face. Hey, this is a fun podcast. I don't want to, <laughs> no, I'm just going to, get, I'm just to get this emotional. <laughs> and yeah, it's just it's just not a nice vibe and you just want to get out of there as soon as Fine. possible. I mean, that sounds pretty awful. I mean, it just, just throw me off because I was gonna, my next question was going to be, <laughs> have you, I bet it's never, I bet it's not as bad as Kanye West as a boss. Hey, I'm pretty sure Kanye has made multiple people cry. It's not about multiple people cry. He's he's been given lots of lawsuits mm. coming his way, and um, Kanye West is potentially the worst boss in human history. Really? And these are some of the things he's done. An employee claimed that Kanye threatened him by saying, "I'm gonna punch you in the face," before abruptly changing tone and then mimicking Super Mario's victory dance. And saying, I'm going to give you one more chance, another life. What? And that's not all. He told employees if they ever got fat, he'd fire them. That's only he gained like some weight recently. This is, this is what Kanye has done. He went on a run, then had staff members coming in to the meeting room and watch Batman on mute in silence. <laughs> a whole film on mute. And they had to watch it in silence. This sounds like torture. And last thing, and lastly, you know he started like a like a Donda private school. He's, yeah, okay. I wouldn't be surprised, but no, sure. but yeah, he so he basically started um he started a thing called the Donda. I think it's called a Donda Academy. It's basically like a mm-hmm. Christian like private school that he's like created. Is it for like black youth or something? Like I don't that? know. Yeah, it might be for black youth, but it's more just like a little Christian school for like youth, like the youth, right? Mm-hmm. Apparently, he wanted to cage them. What? No. Yeah, no, Come on, Yoni, where are you getting No, 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 it's on the news. He wanted to cage he wanted to cage Donda Academy students, right? What? For and this what is, purpose? And I've just literally just taken off the top bit. There's so much stuff. There's so many lawsuits that have come his way. Um what's Kanye doing? I know he's had some lawsuits with like the latest album because he yeah. didn't clear some samples and that like Ozzy Osbourne <laughs> No, but as a boss though, man, that's... As a boss, yeah. Imagine, I mean, imagine your, your manager in the NHS wanted to cage you. What's are you there? sure this is true? I, apparently this is true. This wow. is 100% true. But what's the, what's the aim of caging them? You should ask Kanye. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Kanye does what he wants, doesn't it? He does, yeah. Have you heard about the time where he... Um, he was doing some photo shoot for some magazine. It might have been like Vogue or something, yeah. whatever. And apparently when he went there and they were typing his name on like a Google document or a Word mm-hmm. document, mm-hmm. the fact that his name, Kanye, came up with a red line underneath it and it wasn't recognized by the dictionary, pissed him off so much. And he was like, nah, we're not doing the shoot. What? Yeah. <laughs> and this is not even recent. This is like from a while yeah, ago. Yeah. Raw. This is from a while ago. He's yeah. had he's, he's had some big problems. He's had a lot of big problems, yeah. But I think okay, so again, Kanye is one of my one of my biggest musical heroes. Same, one same, of my same, biggest same. musical heroes from from a long time ago. But I think and I don't think this is him to blame. I don't listen to a huge amount of his music mm-hmm. anymore. I haven't listened to Vultures, but I personally think that he's gone through so much mentally mm. that it's sort of like Burnt him out a bit. Yeah, I, I feel like with his music, so I've, I've in terms of his new album, I haven't heard it in full either. Mm. But like, it's not just this album, like even his previous out, al- like the, the most recent previous ones. Mm. He's definitely like, I wouldn't say, I wouldn't go as far as saying he's lost interest in music, but like he's definitely, it's just not the same for him anymore. Mm. Like compared to the classics of, of back in the day, which is where we all fell in love with Kanye. Mm. As, and, you know, I'm, I still love his music a lot, like his old school stuff. Mm. But, He's definitely a different person. Um, but, okay, first you go back to the boss thing. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of crazy because, um, you know, he said it himself. No one man should have all that power. No, they shouldn't. And he's there wanting to cage students, so. 
big thing. But this brings on to my second point, right? We know he's he's, he's had a bit of a dark time. He's had some dark times. He's had a lot of dark right? times. A yeah. lot of dark times. Even like two years ago, like he was, I think it was like saying the, um, what do you call it? Um, the Freemasons and the um, Illuminati are trying to get after him or some sort of stuff like I that. I mean, he's had a lot of anti-Semitism stuff in the last Yeah, years, he's, he's like. just been kind of crazy. But mm. is there a, where's the line between, I mean, is there a line firstly? And what are your thoughts on the personal lives and antics of artists mm. with their music? Like, is there a separation? Should there be a separation? I find it a very hard debate like, mm. to go into because um, I completely agree with people who see both ways. Like some people say that you can't separate the art from the artist. Mm. Like ultimately their actions are like, there should be consequences to their actions. Right. And, that art is part of it, but then I don't know. Like, I'll be the first to admit, like, I still listen to Michael Jackson. Mm. I still love Same. Michael Jackson. Like, some of my favorite songs are Michael Jackson's. And I have friends who I would think that would be really like anti Michael. Right. But even they're like, I don't believe it. Like, I don't believe that he did those things. Mm. And it's hard because, like, to this day, there is still no like concrete evidence. So the Michael ones, yeah, the Michael ones a difficult one. Not not a difficult one. Like I think there's a lot. Obviously, there's the a lot of rumors. But you're right. Like it's not mm. being concluded properly. But like with artists who you know of, like who's it's it's already uh, it's like fun. you know. For example, like R. Kelly. R. Kelly. Yeah, that was a big one. Yeah. Like, are you like can you separate him and his behavior from his music, or are you? Do you think they're just? It's just it, it goes hand in hand. So like if you don't if like what do you need to do in, the, in those sorts of situations? Mm, I think. Truthfully, yeah, when there is enough damning evidence and like R. Kelly was definitely guilty and there was mm. so much evidence that really pointed in that direction, I think you should, just because the stuff that he did was so nasty and so mm. bad. Mm. I'm going to get so cancelled for this, but Ignition Remix is a banger and they still play it. In Absolutely the banger. They still play Are it. you telling me, right, that like if, if, Ignition, if Ignition played in the club, you're going to stop dancing? Exactly. I'm not. I'm not just gonna. Yeah. I'm gonna stop dancing. Oh, yeah. You're right. <laughs> Terrible person. Great music. <laughs> like it's it's exactly, it's yeah. sad. I know, I know. Like I'm I'm being very jovial about mm, it. I'm not trying to yeah, underplay yeah. the seriousness of his behavior. Like he's Definitely. a terrible. He's an Definitely. awful human being. Mm. Um. Is he, he's currently in prison, right? I think so. Yeah. Deserves yeah. to be there. Deserves to be no prison. doubt, right? But like, mm. his music. His music slaps. Mm. His music absolutely slaps. It's the same. It's the same thing with Chris Brown. Oh. His music slaps. Chris he Brown. punches people, but the music slaps. I don't know if I agree so much about Chris Brown and his music slapping, but I do. I, I think his music does slap, though. I do admit there's a lot from Chris Brown that I, I have liked in the past, mm. but he's another example, someone who I really just do not rate as a human being, and I find it hard to look past that. Right. I find it really hard to look past that. I don't know if you remember. Um, we have a friend called. Do you mention friends' names? Oh, uh, we can do yeah. Yeah. So we have we have this friend called Angeli, and we went to. A birthday. Yeah, I don't know if she's happy with it. But. <laughs> we went to a birthday a few years ago, okay. and uh, someone played the. I think the DJ played the Levitating Remix by Dua Lipa, but oh, has okay. the baby in it. Oh, and at that yeah, time, yeah, yeah. he said lots of like homophobic I things know, about people with AIDS. Yeah, yeah. And I remember shouting like at the DJ, being like, "Fuck the baby, fuck the baby," and someone else was saying it as well. So yeah, I feel like. Sometimes when you're passionate about something enough, mm. you kind of you kind of go that extra mile. Right. But it's a hard one because art is a music. Sorry, music is an art form, right? Mm, mm. And like everyone's going to have their own opinions about it. Everyone's going to have their own connections to it. I don't feel like I'm in a position to say to someone, "You need to stop listening to that." Oh person. yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, sure. But I get it's a very Gray scale area like there's it's a, it's a it's a naughty little area that you don't know you really don't know what to do you really don't know what to do yeah, yeah. even with PDD stuff recently as well like not mm. I think I think nothing's been proven yet but <clears> there's a lot brewing over there there's a lot brewing um, yeah. I mean I'm not really into PDD stuff anyway so it's, no, it neither. doesn't really affect me but um, but it makes you think I'm going into some conspiracy mm. theories here because people have been saying this I think about Diddy for a long time mm. like all the like sex trafficking and stuff yeah yeah. 
they're saying that there's loads of people in like the industry, like not even just music, but like film and TV who are all oh, involved in I like- I think that's a given, bro. Mm. Like in terms of big the industry is like, and there's also lots of people who who, it's, who, who know it's going on, but they're just staying silent. They stay silent, yeah. Uh, yeah. Which listen, I, it's not, I, you can't, I can't blame them. Mm. You know what, they're thinking of their own careers. Um, for them, they're probably thinking, you know what, if I don't, if I, if I'm, if I'm not partaking in it, maybe, mm. you know, I'm not a bad person. Do you know what? I don't know if I agree with that, but like, mm. it's a dark industry, bro. It's like the Harvey it's Weinstein mad, thing. Like, yeah, everyone terrible. must have known it was going on, but no but one you have to, said but you, anything. But these guys have to, they think about their own career, don't they? Because mm. if you go up against these sorts of people, they will ruin your career. Mm-hmm. So it's it's sad. It's it's a very it's a very sad situation to be in. I think mm-hmm. um, when you know it's going on, but mm. it makes yeah. me wonder like what is going on. So much what stuff, are we man. sheltered from? And, like so, we have no idea. That's why the world is dark. Mm. Right? So much naughty stuff going on. Uh, but you're fortunate that two good boys have come here. Mm-hmm. Two cowboys Kick have come boys, here to, <laughs> to shed light on <laughs> on this dark industry. Um, any closing words final statements no i think we've talked very thoroughly about lots of things that have been going on in the world lots of things that we're both very passionate about Mm -hmm. and as i said at the start it was a huge honor to be asked to be part of this and uh to be here in lieu of gopi but never to replace him never to replace him i mean wouldn't mind (laughs) (laughs) joking um yeah no pleasure he is is, as beyonce says yeah irreplaceable Beyonce can be wrong at times. <laughs> <laughs> um, Actually, no. Beyonce says in the song, "You're not, you're not irreplaceable." So never, never get to thinking that you're right, irreplaceable. Okay, okay. So maybe that's what you need to say to gay people. Yeah, yeah, like. fine. I'll, I'll play that. I'll play that to him. Um, yeah, but it's uh, it's been another episode. Um, we talked a lot about music. Music's great. Mm, Music's fun. Music's uh, amazing. We're passionate about it, and very happy and uh, very honoured that you've uh, joined us. Tamid, mm, thank, um, thank you. Hopefully, you had a bit. Hopefully, you had fun. I and did. there we go, guys. It's another episode finished. Um, follow us, subscribe. Um, it's a lot of fun doing this. Obviously, you know, at the moment we're just kind of rotating around with different friends, so it's been fun for me. Mm-hmm. Um, but we'll be back again next week. So uh, join us then. And for this week, it's a uh, bye-bye. bye bye. Bye.